Welcome to Textination. Joining us is June Kamei, a biomimicry designer and material scientist at a company called Amphibio. Thank you for joining us, June. Thank you. Give us a, a bit of an overview of uh, what your background is and what it is you're working on. It's really fascinating. Um, hello, my name is Jun Kamei, and I am a material scientist uh, in terms of training. So I've done a lot of uh, research in the field of uh, novel material, um, especially those are kind of focused on uh, new type of membranes, uh, super hydrophobic water repellent uh, coatings. And a lot of my studies and research were based on uh, the concept of uh, uh, biomimetism, so it's the art of mimicking nature, uh, getting idea from nature by observing the different kind of surfaces, the different mechanisms, the way animals uh, behave between each other, and then translate it into technology. And I've done a lot of that in the field of material science. And after that, I changed my career to become a product designer. Uh, it's mainly because uh, research often what happens is they don't really translate to a product at the very end. And I wanted to kind of go from research to creating a product and bring it to the real world. So therefore, I've changed my career, and that ended up um, translating into my most noble invention, which is a new type of um, oxygen supply system underwater. People might call it an artificial gill uh, because it's, if you kind of combine it with a breathing system, it can supply some of the oxygen that is needed for human to breathe underwater. Describe for us what this looks like. I mean, some of us have seen pictures and videos. There's a mask involved and also uh, a garment. Yes. So the crucial part, the part which, where it's taking oxygen in from the water is actually the white uh, garment, which is covering the torso and in the future, like the whole surface of the body. And the mask is only there to connect the oxygen that's been taken into the garment and to supply to um, our mouse. So that's the combination. So the, the picture is mostly a representation of uh, what it might look in the future. So we have a prototype which is smaller in size, uh, where we've done the initial testing on um, what it can do when it comes to oxygen intake. Well, describe for us uh, a bit uh, how this works. You're taking, you're you're allowing. The goal is to allow people to breathe underwater. So that's the I would say the ultimate goal. Um, so the way it works, it's a uh, it's a membrane system mainly. Uh, which uh, does let gas molecule through, but not water. So if you combine that membrane with a few other things, uh, you're able to create a system which um, constantly get the oxygen which is dissolved in the water uh, when you are in need of oxygen. Um, so therefore, such system needs to have as much contact as the water as possible in order to provide the oxygen from the water. And uh, unfortunately, we human consume a lot of oxygen. Therefore, compared to fish, we would need some a system that is a uh, whole bigger than uh, a fish gill. So therefore, hence um, the calculation that you need um, about a f between uh, 30 to 100 meters square of surface if you wanted to use uh, such system. So that's how pretty much it works. It was inspired from a type of aquatic insect which are able to breathe underwater uh, by having a similar mechanism where they have a surface which is highly water repellent but gas permeable. Obviously you've gotten uh, quite a bit of attention since uh, the this stories about what you're doing have been in the news. Uh, how far away do you feel you are from being able to have an actual product, since that's what your focus is on? So uh, I think there's a few stages uh, when it comes to creating something that is useful for uh, humans. So the first is, uh, there has to be like the first trial where you test the capability of the material and the system um, and prove it you can support um, an oxygen consumption which is equivalent to a human. So 
um, that we are planning to create um, or test that within the next uh, 18 months if everything goes well. And if that test is uh, eventually positive and then bring good result, then it's more about uh, the questions like, okay, um, how to translate that into an actual product. And that whole thing would take even longer because when the question becomes a real human using it in the real environment, it's not just about uh, oxygen supply system, but it's all the safety uh, measures which needs to be incorporated. And I would imagine that would take uh, quite a long time to incorporate everything and to make sure that it is uh, safe for use. So being optimistic, uh, at least three years would be required to have uh, any kind of product prototype of such that human can use it in a, in a, in an almost real environment such as a sea or lakes and would they be able to stay underwater for an indefinite period of time with this or what what are you looking at well so that's that's a really good question so um, we are doing the first trial uh, when it comes to material to eventually answer that question from a practical point of view. Uh, from a theory point of view, it should be able to uh, maintain um, the human uh, for quite a long time, more than a few hours, depending on the depths. So one thing to bear in mind is that uh, sometimes the reason why uh, we can't dive uh, longer than 30 minutes in certain depths is not because of the oxygen, but because of other things like uh, nitrogen building up in our blood um, stream and everything. So therefore, for some shallower depths, um, this type of uh, oxygen supply gill system can eventually make um, our diving time way longer. But depending on like if you go deeper than 30 meter, then it's not just about the oxygen, but like other things coming into factor. So therefore, it might not allow you to stay a few hours at um, 30 meter depths. But you can imagine that um, um, it's a system that kind of allows you to dive uh, repetitively, so you don't really need to recharge the tank. You don't really need to have the uh, few extra 10 kilo behind your back uh, while you're doing the diving. And you can eventually see that it's a, a new a new type of uh, equipment, which will definitely be in between free diving and scuba diving. So a new kind of uh, activity. And obviously, a lot of excitement in the in the diving world about the potential for this. But beyond that, uh, some of the stories have uh, focused on our need for it to survive, possibly as a species, with with climate change. What what do you think of those stories? Is it are they going um, too far? Well, actually, the the, the funny thing is the the story is the reason why uh, I started with this investigation. So. The whole um, idea of a garment which double as a gill started uh, initially looking into the how the urban environment might change in the future. And uh, I located the fact that perhaps in the future where we live in a more amphibious environment because of water level rise and cities being submerged, we might want to see the underwater world as a, as a part of our daily life. Um, so I hope it's, well, on one side, I do hope that uh, such scenario wouldn't happen, but you have to also think in mind that um, um, more realistically, this type of technology can be used for um, rescue purposes um, for during like the flooding incidents uh, where you have more and more. So um, yes, it's inspired from a very, how to say, sci-fi scenario, but the question like, is, is this sci-fi scenario um, as sci-fi because um, you've seen a lot of flooding and things like that and I do see some of the oxygen supply technology being able to probably help in that field too. Very interesting. Now, how expensive do you anticipate this may be to produce? Obviously, everything costs a lot at the, at the mm -hmm. outset. I mean, that's a really difficult question. Um, eventually, because uh, we are not at all at a phase where it's about mass manufacturing. Um, it's it's much easier to calculate the cost when you're at a stage where you can mass manufacture thing. But you can easily imagine um, it's at least like 50 times the price of a normal scuba diving uh, or something like that. 
and and eventually because of uh, it's not just the material but like the whole system if you think of incorporating the whole system around safety and uh, if and and then to make sure that everything works and it's uh, going to be um, a lot of equipment and technology um, not a lot of tech equipment in terms of mass, but a lot of uh, thinking into what uh, each of the safety uh, technology should do in correspondence with the oxygen supply system. Does it require a, a power system, electricity or something? Well, if we, depending on the next uh, few months result about the material, then we might end with the conclusion that it should have a few active systems to make sure that for example, water is pumped around the garment, or perhaps like you have a pumping system in the gill to help people breathe the air that is inside, or perhaps you might end up with the conclusion that it should always be uh, combined with a hybrid uh, smaller oxygen tank uh, to make sure that uh, everything uh, goes fine um, in any cases. So, so those are the kind of like consideration uh, to have in mind. The concept that, that you've come up with, have you, have you proven that you can take oxygen from the water with, with what you've come up with so far? I mean, that's uh, definitely yes, that's already done. The difficult question is, uh, um, is it enough for, for human to breathe? Uh, and in such case, how big would the system be? And the other question is like, how deep uh, can it be used? So those are the kind of like two very important factors when it comes to uh, using it um, um, underwater, whether it's for diving or whether for it's um, it's a bigger underwater architecture oxygen supply system or whether it's for a submarine. Are you attracting uh, a lot of interest from potential investors? Uh, so what we're doing is uh, we are kind of like uh, having um, the first initial fund in order to kind of prove the technology part. And I do think when this stage is, uh, if, if th that stage brings a positive result, then you'll be open for a bigger fundraising. For more information on all that you're doing, where is the best place for people to go online? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, intentionally, we haven't really released too much information because of uh, intellectual property um, application that is happening uh, now. Uh, so unfortunately, like the site of the company is not open yet. Uh, but if you're interested to learn more, you can definitely go to my personal website, uh, which is uh, www.junkamei.com. Um, and then you see some of the things that is happening uh, around the, the invention. Well, we look forward to seeing what comes of this and, and your work. Obviously, it's, it's very important. Jun Kamei, thank you for taking the time with us. Thank you very much. Now this. How many companies out there have continued to innovate when it comes to building a better radio? I'm Fred Fishkin, host of Textonation, and I'm here to tell you about the new CC SkyWave SSB radio from the wonderful people at C-Crane. Bob and his crew really love radio, and it shows in this new compact model that is packed with features. Beyond great AM and FM reception and sound, you can tune into shortwave signals from around the world. Listen to ham radio operators, aviation, and more. It's the radio you'll turn to every day, and in emergencies. It will run for nearly three days on just two AA batteries. Pair the sleep timer with the new Soft Speaker 3, and you've got the perfect radio for your nightstand. Of course, it can wake you up too. Click on Ccrane at textination.com and put in the code textination for a free flashlight with your order. They love radio, and you'll love Ccrane.